Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar number two from the new series of webinars from Playbox Neo. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, it's 10 a.m. Central European time. Um, our, today's uh, theme was is uh, Channel in a Box and Remote MCR Solutions. I would, I would go over um, some of the current solutions we have and what else you can do workflow-wise with remote and uh, uh, and uh, remote management monitoring and uh, and so on. So you can you can get the benefit of all these new technologies and still use your um, equipment. As you know, currently everybody is being. Uh, quarantine at home at different parts of the world or has a limited access to office spaces and so on. So this whole um, situation prompted us to go and create um, so this webinar and sh to show you solutions how you can manage your playouts remotely. Channel in a box, as you know, Playbox, this is how the company started over 20 years ago. And, uh, and this was uh, actually the channel in a box term was one of the very new one at the time. So uh, we can say we are one of the foremost companies in, in, in this field. So back in the day, master control room was a huge uh, room filled with equipment, tape recorders, uh, automation servers all controlled by uh, protocols of different companies and so on and so forth. So at this time, powerful computers came and you can squeeze everything in one box. And that was a big advantage for a lot of broadcasters and uh, even smaller companies can afford to have a proper automation, proper um, play out and so on. You're familiar with the the three big components of channel in a box. This is the air box, Neo, which is the playout, automation, scheduling, the title box, which is the CG, the graphics that you see on air, and capture box, which allows you to capture um, file, ingest files or live video streams, uh, SDI sources, and so on. First, I wanted to go over um, some of the automation tricks inside Airbox that um, in previous um, webinar somebody uh, asked about. The autofill feature is very important one to maintain a flawless um, broadcast in case you have missing files or some uh, something happens in the playlist and there is a gap in the playlist. For example, you can designate bunch of files, I will create um, either live source to replace the missing files or um, a short group of files that you can designate to fill that gap. Um, I will select the second method. So I'll say fill, I'll name this category and I will insert some files let's say let's say couple of, couple of promo files as you see um, here's the important section says truncate which means at least one file you have to designate to be truncated so if it if it needs to fill some odd time um, uh, the gap is with a time that doesn't fit exactly the length of the clips, one of the clips at least, or more of them, you can just truncate them in order to fit that. Um, somebody says they lost their sound. I think, I don't know, you guys tell me if everyone else can hear me or it's just one, um, one of our viewers. Okay, so... I, I selected this list and 
the categories field. If you create categories close to the categories you have in the playlist, let's say like news or uh, music, uh, if you have the same category, if a file from this category is missing, then uh, fillers from, from the same category filling list will be chosen. So in this case, I selected I selected some number of files and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the properties of the last file here and I'll force it to go fixed time, let's say now it's at 1 p.m., okay? And I have to advance four day offset because this machine has already been running three days in loop, so uh, properly uh, calculates the time in advance. So now you will see that I have a gap of one hour, 50 minutes and so on. If I go to this, I'll jump to the file before. Uh, by the way, uh, before I proceed, let me, let me tell you, you can go and check um, what we're doing online. You see, see it on the screen behind me, but you can also check it online on our YouTube channel. I'll copy the link in the in the chat. Um, so right now, right now, there is the default clip playing. The default clip is a black clip. If I go again into the properties and I select, just let me go and jump to another place just to. Okay, I'm going back to the clip that I put on a fixed time, so it creates a gap. I can, I can go and select custom auto fill category for this clip, and it will be my fill category that I created. The default clip is just a black clip to have some video file there. Um, and let me, uh, let me check again the, the time, all right. So uh, the clip will uh, will insert the necessary the necessary data when this gap occurs. Okay, so if I jump on it, it will start playing the files from the other clip. You see the image squeeze because uh, the the video scale was on previously. So it will rotate those clips until it fills out the necessary time and then just um, comes out to the next clip. So that's the one simple way. You always have to designate these emergency fillers if something happens with the playlist and you need to do something, you know, without, uh, without operator it will fill out the gaps. Another another cool feature uh, is you can I'll open now our graphics engine. And I'll, currently it was running in automated mode, which means commands from the playlist, like certain categories. Uh, trigger graphic rules, which I explained previous time. Basically, you can create graphic rules that trigger trigger the gra trigger the graphics engine. Let's say I'll create new folder. Um, you can create graphic rules. The easiest way to explain it is: let's say if the category is clip or music, then load template with proper name, whatever your, the name of your graphics template is, and uh, use the text of the file, let's say artist and song, so you can populate the, the name of the song and so on. And you can have uh, at what time, how many seconds from the beginning of the clip, the graphic shows, then hide, and then towards the end of the clip show and hide again. So this is all a, rule, a graphic rule. You set it, and then you can easily go and recall a template that's pre-designed and um, automate the data in, a, in like the names of the artist and um, song. So graphics 
graphics, it's easy to create with our platform because it's a very uh, friend, user friendly graphic interface. You can have uh, pictures, text, scrolls. Uh, for example, if I just go with, uh, with a crawl, I'll select it here in this part of the screen. And I can assign data source. And data source, I can go and check, let's say, currently, I, desi I um, went and I took RSS feed from the BBC website. And if I go and just assign the data source, you can give the parameters how often to refresh and so on and so forth. So now you see this, this object, I can store it and it will show up it will show up on screen here on the lower part of the screen you can see it these are very simple ways to create some graphics interactive data coming onto the screen also you can use weather services to create your weather map uh, news from various data sources and so on so this I'll switch back to net control so my playlist continues to control the predetermined projects going with the playlist. By the way, everything you see, you can see how, how complex and uh, beautifully looking uh, graphics you can create with our system. Okay. Um, so. Um, we have everything working on the server and typically people have a remote access to the server or sit in front of it but nowadays as we mentioned we need some solutions that we can work remotely and try to um, have an efficient workflow even if we not physically at the space using remote uh, access services like team viewer or, or similar it's okay to some extent but still it's not perfect because one person has access to the whole server, to the whole uh, machine, which sometimes can lead into not very desirable <laughs> consequences. So we designed product called Multiplayout Manager, and it's a service that runs into the same network where the playout servers are. You have number of users, number of servers, that, that's a license controlled, so whatever number you need, you can go and configure it, and some of the features are configured um, based on the dongle. And you access this service through a web browser, Chrome web browser. So when I log in, right now you see the same machine that you've seen in the background running. You see it right now in the browser. I can do the same thing, go jump to a place in the playlist. Um, because the files have ex uh, are indexed, I can go and select a certain file and open the online clip trimmer and I can go and in out points I can I can trim on this. Also also, I have options file to be a file uploader if that's allowed in the uh, in the settings. Since I'm administrator, I can upload files via the web browser, or you can select uh, FTP service to the. It's more convenient in some cases. Also, I have a playlist editor which allows me online to go in from designated folders for this channel. To create a playlist let me go to the to the administration of the system and currently i have one airbox server assigned to this service as you can see where is the server uh, where is the media folders for the media folders i can select the category and color which i'll show you this feature a, a little bit later on what you can do with this what type of files to look into these folders, uh, playlist, where, where your playlists are, let's say daily playlists or something. If you have Databox, which is another Playbox product, you can also hook it up and see it as a, uh, a tag. Uh, you can see it also as a source from, uh, from media files and carry all the metadata that's associated with them. 
uh, users, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm administrator currently, but you can have only viewers, somebody that just looks at this, but but cannot do any anything like a controlling the playlist jump and so on, start, stop, upload, or any of this. Or uh, operator, which you have all of the access of the administrator without this screen where you're setting up which server, passwords, and all of this. So you have versatile, multi-tier level of access to this machine. Okay. Um, as you can see, we can add custom events, which are the events that you can insert into the playlist. And also we have something shot, uh, called Shotbox, which is a very useful pr um, one push button commands like logo show on off uh, live insert and so on very very similar to the online uh, to the desktop version of the software like like this shot box down here okay so right now i want to add another server i have another instance running here on my my computer so in order to go here I like to add another server. I can add it manually if I know the IP address or exactly particular machine I, in an instance I want to connect to. But the easiest way is to say, let me search for it and search the entire network or just a uh, portion of the, your local network. And right now, I will just wait for a couple of seconds and the server server will find all the all the machines that I have on the local network. For example, this is my IP address and I know this is the second instance, so I'll add it. Uh, we have to designate frame rate, time offset. This feature allows you, let's say if I'm in, like currently I'm in Bulgaria, but the server broadcasts in Central Europe, so it's an offset of one hour. I can dial in this one hour offset here, and I'll show you when why I need I need to do this uh, shortly, but you can uh, set properly the timing of the server to, uh, against the place where you're monitoring it from. Okay, uh, so we have it at, we have this server added, so you can see I have it here beyond just granted users, I will add myself with role full access. You see you have control operator, playlist editor, so people that can only just go and create playlists for the future broadcast but no access to the live broadcast, uh, view only as I described, and full access like I, I described for myself. All right, so if we go back here, you can see that I, I have two servers right now. And uh, this will show this second server, also the first one. Let me just go and view groups. View groups is another thing where you can assign a bunch of servers into a view group so you can easily switch if you have more than, more than one server. Uh, set up. I'll log out of the system just to make sure that my new server is being, yes. You can see right now I have the first server that you've been watching behind my back and this is the second server uh, that I can easily go on the screen and you can see it's a different, has a different playlist here. I didn't assign media folders to this one so you don't see anything here. On the, my main server, you can see the media folders and the data box folder. So the very useful feature using the color and the category. So everything that is from this folder will have a category promo and it will have orange color in the playlist. So if I go and take, let's say, this file and insert it into the live playlist, you see immediately it is labeled promo and it has the color. So by designating these categories, it's very easy to control number of things like I show you, the graphics. So when this clip comes, immediately the proper graphic will kick in. Um, I can just remove the clip, 
I show you, I can go and do some clip trimming. Short box, you can see all of these commands that I have predefined. So I can trigger like logos or some title box projects. So the operator comfortably can, can do this without actually ac need an access to the graphics engine because typically on air you use pre-made, uh, pre-designed templates and that's what you need. You don't need to go and start writing a new project and designing a new template, obviously. So all of this you can do to show logo, logo of, graphics stuff, but whatever whatever you, you desire to, to, to put here. You can do it in an insert, like let's say live, if I want to insert somewhere live, I can just insert it wherever my my cursor is, or I can be on an executive mode, which means it will just insert it immediately, whatever, whatever I, um, I can do it straight on the playlist. So these are a lot of options that we can, we can do from here. Uh, like for example, let me go and show you the uh, control groups is the second tab that you see up here. Control groups, you can put number of servers that you can control simulta simultaneously, like start, stop, insert file. If you have, let's say, number of channels and you want to have emergency sort of situation where you want to insert live news, news flash across all of them right now at this very second, you just go to the control group if you have designated such a group. It has a one master machine, so you go basically on this one, insert the life, it will go all of the uh, machines in the group. Timeline. This is something that I uh, showed you that you need the time offset, so you have an overview of all of the servers, sort of as a uh, electronic uh, uh, catalog on the TV uh, where you see all the programming. And right now I can see my first channel, what's going on, what's coming down the line. Uh, you see the colors of categories so you can easily have a clear view of what's going on or I have something coming like, a, you see, it shows me a gap here so I can be aware as a broadcast engineer what's going on there, or um, I have a live, so I can also be aware if I want to go and just go to this channel and do something. And when you have the time offset, basically all the channels properly will be um, set at the running time where this red line is, so okay, I have the best sense of what's going on right now. Um, you, have, you have as a insert options, again, pretty much the, com the controls are very similar to the, um, to the actual Airbox desktop version. You can insert items and you can have media file, live stream, UDP, dummy clip, event, fill events, uh, and also custom events that I described that you can just type custom events that do something, graphic stuff or Facebook, feed start or something that controls your graphic system, whatever you whatever like to do at this point. So it's very comfortable, versatile, and you can easily deal with this. Uh, this part, this part uh, of the screen shows you all of the servers. And again, if you have control groups currently, I did not define control groups, but, but you can go and define one. Uh, Playlist editor, as I mentioned briefly, again, it's uh, off, It's like a list box, so you can easily take files, create from the folders that are allowed for this channel to use. They're mapped to, the, to this channel. I can put the media, just simple drag and drop, and, you know, do things like clip trimming and so on. All the features that you have, typically, to put to get a playlist and I can save it as a daily playlist um, and all to the pre-designated folder so there's very little room for error and voila, you have you have uh, your next day and the following day playlist all set, all from a web interface. This is very 
comfortable where you have multiple people also to work. Let's say one, as I described, is a playlist editor. So this is a person that only has access to this functionality. It will not be able to do anything for the on-air stuff, but you can go and just log in and create playlists. Uh, also, the operator obviously will have all the features that you can use the shot box, you can control the playlist, switch between the whatever number of servers he has access to, and so on, monitor the timeline. Uh, if you have file uploader rights, again, you will, um, you can just upload files to the predetermined folders, or you can upload them via other means, as I mentioned. Um, and this will, this will get you absolutely covered in all the cases. Upload media, create playlists, uh, recall templates with shortcut commands uh, or functionality like uh, inserting events into the playlist and monitor your broadcasting currently on air. So you can see I have two machines right now, which is which is great. You can go with many servers and uh, actually guys, um, my colleagues will try to answer your questions while I'm doing this presentation because it's a little bit hard for me to go <laughs> and, and read your questions, but um, uh, how can give category of bu for a bunch of files? Uh, somebody asks, uh, as I described, you giving category based per, per folder, media folders. Let's say I have one media folder here, but I can add another media folder and everything in this folder will be from a certain category. Let's say if I go here and I have to enter name, map it to the network path or a local path, um, filter what type of files I want to see in this folder, let's say only media files, because I don't want to see any other, let's say, proxy files or something like that. Uh, I can put the category and the color that assigned to this particular folder, and then I will see it, I will see it here as another tab with a color, and then I, every time I drag from this file, everything shows, sorry, I have to be, um, here when uh, time is still not passed. So you can see it goes this far with the promo tag that I designated. And I can remove this item. Let me just go here and remove the gap on this file. So, uh, I think I'm done, I'm done right now with my presentation and I would like to open the floor for questions and answers. So um, I'll try to answer to the best of my abilities and my colleagues are standing by also in the chat, uh, our broadcast engineers, sales uh, managers, so we can go and uh, answer all of your questions. how to connect multiple cameras and show on one screen. So you want to do multi-viewer? Uh, is that correct that I'm... A... There, there is an option that you can have a live viewer which shows all the live sources and you can monitor them. And when you see, let's say, a, something that's coming, uh, on one of the channels and you can insert it as a live if that's what you're asking me. It's called Live Viewer. It's uh, um, Frank Turner. Uh, when you say SCT, you mean uh, triggered by like an ad, ad insertion? You're talking about ad insertion? Dealing with a, with a SCT triggers. Yes, we do support that and uh, there will be uh, one of the coming webinars we will be focusing exactly on this workflow, how you can use uh, SCD-35 uh, 
you know, 104, we use this for um, doing a add insertion into using um, Airbox Neo as an ad sorter. What is the minimum? There is no minimum time. Um, thank you, Frank. Um, so there is no minimum lead time to, to change the list. As you see, I change the list while I'm right on air. I can go at any point and jump right here, and it and it jumps right away to the to the live, and or jump uh, to another place, or I can go and just insert file or anything like you've seen me doing it. Maybe here I can go and just insert right before the live here, and it's there. There is no, the system works in immediately. The clips and the changes on the playlist are right on the air. So there's no need to be concerned of, no need to be concerned of uh, lead time and so on. This is just choice of the operator. If you want to do some changes right now in this very minute, go ahead and do it. It's not a it's not a restriction. Daily playlist, as you know, it's one of the forms of scheduling for this system. So you have playlist that starts at a specific time. Uh, you can you can make daily playlist so they are out at the designated time and date. Uh, also, the uh, auto fill gap function that I show you may work if you select uh, between playlists. Let's say I have a playlist that is not full 24 hours and every morning at six o'clock my new day playlist starts. So it finishes, let's say, at three o'clock in the morning. So I have a three hour ga gap. Uh, auto fill function will, will be able to cover this gap between daily playlist also. Um, the jump from one clip to another, yes, it has a little bit, it has a little bit of uh, time because typically you, you, to have a gapless playback, you know, as you notice, when one file finishes, the next one couple of seconds need to pre-buffer so they are absolutely perfectly stitched together. So if when I'm jumping around, you need a little bit of, of this pre-buffering to make the seamless cut there. That's why you're experiencing a second or two, not even that much. You can lower significantly the time. This all depends on the reliability of performance of your system. Um, yes, transitions are available. Um, they can be assigned to the beginning of the clip, fade in, fade out, and a couple, couple of those. You can, you can go and, um, you can go and assign it. Uh, so, uh, let me see what. It, uh, yes, you can do. You can do uh, ahead of time. You can program schedule for month ahead. You just create daily playlists, as I showed you. You create playlists that just when you're saving it, you say this is a daily playlist. The daily playlist is a normal playlist, but the title of the list is uh, basically. Let me just go and show you. The title of the list is the the year, month, date, and time down to the second when the playlist should start. So Playbox New looks at this, and if you have a pre pre predetermined folder, you can see all available daily playlists here. And you can see when is the next one coming. You can be aware if there is some discrepancy there and so on. Um, uh, can you chroma king? This is not a production tool. This is chroma king is something that you need to do outside of the broadcast, like a, have a video switcher and do all this stuff. This is a playout system, so we deal with video sources, media sources, and so on. Um, Somebody's asking me, uh, if I select 10 clips, can I give them category? Yes, as I showed you, but this feature with the category and, and the color is available only in the MPM, uh, I mean, in a desktop situation is not available. This is just some extra for to make the online use, usage a little bit more streamlined and benefit that workflow. Because, um, you know, 
you want quickly to add some files and if they are from the predetermined category that easily controls the graphics so it's minimum work when you're on air and you want to do something some changes and so on so here every file I, I, I do I can I can go and take 10 files and just put them in and they as you see all of them got here with the proper category and and, and so on uh, but this is a feature, this is a feature with uh, multiplayer app manager. Uh, data box, no, data box it's just shown as a source and you can do uh, whatever categories and you have assigned because it works in a different way. It's a catalog of your media. Uh, you manage the assets in a different way. This just allows you to have assets from data box with all the metadata that you've assigned, uh, like counting uh, episodes and so on, and you just drag and drop. So if you have to, you have to put this descriptions in data box when you're indexing the media there. This is designed like the media folders and so on is designed again for quick, easy functionality to, to help you. Um, yes, somebody asked, yes, you can stream with multi play out, uh, multi outputs. You can have IP streams to several places. Currently, we're streaming to YouTube, but we know upcoming demo we'll showing um, as the new SRT format for secure streaming. We'll be going to multiple places and you'll see all this, how it works. This is one of the topics for the upcoming webinars. We'll focus on uh, this new SRT protocol, which we have implemented into the system. So you can see it. Um, let me just close one of my uh, instances because I have one too many of them. Yes, uh, GPU accelerated streaming is available. I've shown this at length at our previous um, previous webinar, you have NVIDIA accelerated uh, accelerated uh, streaming, which greatly offloads the main CPU and you can uh, and you can benefit from the new video cards like NVIDIA card is supported currently and that gives you a great option to do multiple streams or encode um, H.265 which previously was almost impossible on CPU to do everything, run the application graphics and have the encoding also done. So yes, GPU streaming, it's supported in the system and you can, and you can do it easily. Just assign, assign the, my output modules. Currently I have internet streaming, which is my streaming to to YouTube that I've shared the link with you. And let's say here I can select my format, RTMP, UDP, uh, what video codec. I have MPEG-4, MPEG-2, but you see here uh, I have NVIDIA accelerated encoder or Havoc encoder also NVIDIA accelerated. So that greatly benefits the CPU. The video squeeze option. The video squeeze option is uh, allows you to do a DV DV effect. Uh, like if I press it, it will it will go and uh, um, okay. If the if the option is not available, you need to update to the latest version of Playbox Neo product. Talk to support our support staff, and they will tell you exactly what you need to to update to get all this functionality. I'm showing the latest version released of the software, obviously. So you can go and do it. You can do this, the so-called squeeze or um, like if we go to the news type of thing, you see you can, you can squeeze the picture and you can load some graphics uh, and so on. Let me just remove my, you see all this L shape kind of graphics, you can go and do it.
All right. Uh, if anybody has, all this is programmable to squeeze at specific time, goes to, from one position to the other, and then restores back, obviously, when you finish with your graphics and lower turret and the L shape. Um, okay, Frank, it's a little bit hard for me to start doing uh, I don't understand uh, what you asking me. Probably you have to you have to just connect to uh, the secondary events that are available. When you do insert, you see all events here. This is all what is available in in the system. So you see these are available on the desktop version and some of the events are available uh, are available onto the online version that we deem necessary for and relevant to the this remote workflow. Okay. Uh, how many channels from one server? There is no limit to the number of channels, the limit is the, the resources on your machine. Currently, very comfortably, you can do two streams with NVIDIA acceleration, uh, H.264 on a regular server that we have nowadays, um, and SDI simultaneously, obviously. You're seeing the SDI all the time behind my back, and we have the YouTube streaming. But using using the the SRT protocol, which we will show, you can use a gateway where you hit with one stream there, and then this gateway will will split the stream to many locations. So you don't need to make separate encoders, let's say, to go Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch or some whatever platform. Uh, yes, you can you can contact our sales guys and they'll get get you a demo license, demo dongle for for the product you need, and you know walk you through all the details. So the number of channels is all the number of streams or instances or how many channels you can do per server and so on is matter of resources. Computers are getting faster and faster, so. Things are getting better and better. Um, no, if the streams are originating from one instance of Airbox, the the every separate stream is just uh, encoding in a different format from one uh, from one instance. So the graphics is created into the main engine, not in the stream. So they will be with the same logo. If you need separate logos and so on, they need to be separate instances of, of air boxes. They can be they can be very simple. I can get one main source from Airbox one and then have two and three running on a separate machine or four just re re rebroadcasting, just putting a different metadata logo or so on, and then um then I can encode them into different streams. So there is a workflow solutions. Again, talk to our broadcast engineers. They will work with you to get to get the best solution and with the minimum resources for you. Synchronized playlists. I mean, playlists are synchronized by the central clock, the timing of the computer, which you can synchronize to a proper timing service. Uh, that's one way that you're synchronizing them. Also, here, as I mentioned, control groups, if you have multiple servers, when I press start on the main computer in the group, they all receive the command start and they all start playing. If you have a fixed time event in the playlist, everything synchronizes to that time event based on the clock on your system. So that's the way how you synchronize playlists.
Does anybody have any other questions? Again, this uh, this uh, presentation will be available on the Playbox Neo website. And um, you'll be able to see it uh, after the, today we're doing two presentations, so tomorrow they will be uploaded to the site so you can take a look. Um, SCT35 and 104, those are, this is a um, protocol that uh, has triggers for triggering local commercials. Let's say uh, if you have up incoming stream from somewhere with the main programming, but at the moment of commercials, they send this trigger. Uh, in the past was done through DTMF, which is a tonal signals on one of the audio tracks. Let's say track three and four, one of them has this tonal uh, beep that creates a um, command that says, okay, insert local advertising. And in this moment, when watching your live stream coming through the air box, it will switch to the playlist that I have here. And then at the end of the playlist or when the command comes out of uh, advertising block, we will, it will divert back to the to the mainstream, the stream from outside, either SDI or IP. In this case, um, 104 is the SDI version of this type of protocol and signaling. SCT35 is this type of signaling that you can put also as an event. Let's say if this is my main playlist, I can insert, I can insert, um, I can insert this type of uh, signaling in inside uh, inside the stream. So in the playlist, which will insert it into the stream. Hello. Um, so again, as I said, uh, add insertion. Uh, add insertion will be explained in a separate um, webinar. We'll go into details about this work scenarios. NDI, yes, I've shown this previous time. If I go to my live inputs, I have, I have, let's say this is a UDP stream, but let's say this one was even, I can define any NDI source on my network. I even demoed it last time with my phone, use the phone camera broadcast into the network and I can have NDI source either. This is my phone or Live2 is a uh, feature that, that that is a local NDI stream. I'll try to show it to you with another product we have, which is a, which is a production airbox is called. Um, it allows you to do quick in production environment, for instance, as player. So I have one instance and it's, and it goes with a, with the NDI output and I can go here and insert quickly. Um, let's say here, I can go and insert live stream, live stream, um, let's say live stream two which is predetermined and if I jump to it you will see this is this is the instance coming from here um, I'm just have to set it up probably it works it works between between the all of the sources in the network so you have you have that feature um, is the NDI feature available in the new version is available again. Whatever I'm showing you guys is in the latest version. You need to upgrade to this version in order to get all these features, the acceleration in the um, UDP streams. And uh, acceleration. NDI, uh, RTMP streaming, all of these features are part of the the latest um, the latest version.
Okay, um, if there's no more questions, I would like to thank you for joining us. Please write to us if you have any other topics that are interested for you. We'll be doing a lot of these webinars since all the trade shows this year um, are cancelled and we want to keep in touch with everybody and keep going with uh, new products, presentations, working with uh, special use cases with, with existing uh, with existing products and so on. How can you use NDI? As I told you, you just define define NDI either as an output onto the system or as an input, and you stream into the network NDI stream, and that's it. Uh, there is it's not any different than than any other source in the system. Like for example, here I can see what is available when the, the the source is going and I can select one one of the streams and so on. You can use it with even with Skype. Skype has NDI output. If it's on your network, you can designate it as a one live source and you go. Um, if that presents interest, I'll, I'll do a, in the, one of the following webinars, I'll do something specifically using it, multiple NDI sources and show you how we can utilize that as a live source, if that's... The, the music channel graphics, I mean, you can see right now, here in the playlist, the easiest way, the easiest way to do music graphics is by creating a lower third graphics. You see all of these animated features and stuff are project in title box. And you can change the name, the name of the sing, the singer, and the name of the song via graphic rules that I showed in the beginning of our demo. You create a rule that says if the category is music, then a load template, which is your lower third, um, start playing if it has any animation like you're seeing here on the screen and then extract from the name of the file the title and the the, the title of the file the name of the song and uh, extract uh, the song name and uh, artist all this you can extract from title star or other metadata columns that you inserted and then this is figured automatically if you have clip that it's music, category music, it automatically uh, triggers that graphic. Graphic can be shown, let's say, five seconds from the beginning of the clip, stays for 10 seconds, and then uh, goes out. And then towards the end of the clip, whatever percentage or seconds before the end of the clip shows again, stays for 10 seconds and goes again. You can show next, coming next, and so on. Th there are a lot of features like this, but, you know, I can't go over them into the webinar. This is more of a specialized training session that you can arrange with uh, our support staff or uh, broadcast engineers, the salesperson that's working with you. You can get all this easily set. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, yeah. <sighs> okay, guys, if that's all, I will uh, close for the day session and hope to see you in the next one coming soon. You'll see the topic. We're, we're just collecting all the feedback from you to see what will, will be the most interesting topic for the next one. As I mentioned, we have a couple of topics that are already planned to happen, and we'll go over this in the course of the next weeks, the coming weeks. Thank you, everybody, uh, and I hope to see you soon in the next webinar.